Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence the 17th. Today, a fairly technical, but I think really fascinating look at competition and potential profit and the advisability of entering a particular marketplace. Uh, it's called Porter's Five Forces Analysis. And what it is, uh, is a Harvard professor named Michael Porter who created in the late 70s these five kind of litmus tests for whether or not companies should go into a market with a new product to compete against other products that either already exist or might be coming to the marketplace to begin with. It's kind of fascinating to apply it to what we do because usually the answer is, I don't care, right? When you, when you hear the five tests, you'll understand what I'm saying. So what this is designed to do is to uh, help you judge whether or not creating a new product or service, bringing it to market is going to be profitable, successful, is even a good idea worth doing. So the first test is, is there a threat of new entrants? How high is the threat of new entrants? So in other words, is there a barrier to entry? Do you have some sort of magic formula that others don't have, can't copy, can't reverse engineer, uh, or can anybody do it? Is there a low barrier to entry? So number one, threat of new entrants. Number two, threat of substitutes. So whatever your product or service does, is there a different thing that can do the same thing, that can solve the same problem? Is there a high threat of substitutes or a low threat of substitutes? So for example, in terms of food, uh, you know, you're selling a new meat or you're selling uh, a fake meat. Well, you know, there's vegetables, you know, there's fish, um, landline phones, mobile phones, right? They both create, you know, a, a Zoom, Skype, right? Um, the third one is the bargaining power of customers in that sector. And that is, can they put pressures on you to lower your prices so that they'll buy your thing over somebody else's? A uh, product that might be higher priced, might be more difficult to get. So threat of new entrants, threat of substitutes, bargaining power of customers. Then there's the bargaining power of suppliers. You know, are the people that give you the raw materials for what you do, the tools that you need to create what you do, uh, are they able to control their prices and maybe make it more expensive for you to buy from them? Or not even sell to you at all because they'd rather sell to a competitor. They have some sort of contractual uh, deal with competitors. You can't buy the raw materials that you need to do this, right? And then finally, it's competitive rivalry. This idea of just how competitive and just how cutthroat and just how genius are your rivals. Like, do you want to get into the mobile phone business when Apple and Samsung and Huawei and all these others that are really good at what they do uh, are already there? Do you want to get into the chip business? Do you want, you know, so the question is, how does this apply to us as performers? And the answer is, we have a constant threat of new entrants. And the question is, is this still worth doing if we know that somebody could come along and maybe do the job better than we are? I say, yeah, it doesn't really matter. That's what this, 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 this deals with business. But when you apply it to what we do, you can think, oh, okay. Uh, the threat of substitutes, the threat is high. There's going to be a lot of people who casting people can grab without grabbing you, and they do it all the time. So is that going to stop you from becoming a performer? Nope. Uh, the bargaining power of customers. Well, the good news here is that there is a marketplace and uh, a union that kind of stabilizes that. If they want to buy anybody who can do what we do, they have to pay a particular price. But if it's non-union or if it's a new category the bargaining power of customers can be really high, you know, or if it's a popular thing, if if lots of people can do it, well, I can get this guy to do it for 100 bucks as opposed to 500 bucks. So there is some bargaining power. Is that going to stop you from becoming an actor? Probably not. Uh, bargaining power of suppliers. This one is kind of difficult to lay along the terms of what we do, but then we still need to be on audition sites. We need to have uh, headshots done, we need to have demo reels made, we need to take training in voiceover and in acting. And there, you know, the value of what those suppliers provide is pretty clear. And so there is bargaining power on that part. But is that going to stop you from entering the market? Nope, it sure isn't. 
And then competitive rivalry. It's like your customers, your suppliers, other people in the business, they all kind of interact. And the good news is we don't often look at this as a competitive, and we certainly shouldn't look at what we do as a competitive business. I always tell my clients, it's not a race. It's not a sprint. If anything, it's a marathon. And what you're doing is competing against yourself, not against other people. Because there's no scorecard somewhere. You know, there, there's there's ways of keeping track of your success, but there's no scorecard somewhere where somebody goes, oh yeah, I'm not going to consider anybody new because I only want to go with the tried and true. I want to go with the, the champion actors. You know, that just doesn't work. Anyway, it's really interesting. It's called Porter's Five Forces, and it's worth looking up. I gave you the link for the Wikipedia article. I'd love to know how you think this applies to what we do. Do you look at it as a race? Do you look at it as, oh, I'll never get work because those other people are so much better than I am, or they charge less than I do, or or they've got more experience than I have, or they're prettier than I am? You know, all those limiting beliefs, you know, does that stop you? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Leave me a comment below, let me know. Um, Hopefully I'll be back soon from my surgery so you can stop looking at this stupid shirt if you're seeing this every day. But um, I I do thank you for paying attention to these videos and I love when you interact with them and give me what you think. Um, I I just really do. I, I find this to be a fascinating process. If you'd like to join my YouTube channel, subscribe to it by clicking on my head there. If there's no head there, there's a subscribe button somewhere on the page. Or if you want to see the latest video I've done, click on that frame and YouTube will play it for you. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you tomorrow.